All right, guys, how you doing? Welcome to another video. You know, today I am I am uh, going to go ahead and make another hunter guide. It has been man, probably a couple years since I made the last hunter guide that I made, and that was for hardcore, classic hardcore. It was a long time ago. Okay, um, I got some really good feedback on that guide. Most people really liked it. I did have some people that didn't really agree with the guide with the with the um, with my choice of pet especially um, but you know what I'm gonna do it again except for this time it's gonna be for season of discovery okay and we're essentially gonna do a hunter guide season of discovery we're gonna go through runes specs and pets okay uh, on what I recommend for all three specs beast mastery marksman and survival um, pet choices for well, really two of them, or all three if you really want to. Um, and, you know, we're going to go through talents and all that good stuff. And I'll kind of show you guys, I set up a character with, um, you know, different different gear that I think would be really good gear that you can really go for. Whether you're, um, well, really kind of in this situation it benefits the horde but we'll, we'll 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 get to that in a little bit all right but uh let's go ahead and get into it right away guys so the main thing that is going to decide what spec that you choose is essentially how you want to work with the rune system okay i'm not going to go through exactly you know you know all different classes runes and all that kind of stuff today we're just talking about the hunter okay so i'll go really quickly over the runes um, these runes are from level 1 to 25. When you unlock them, how you unlock them, don't really know. Um, but I'm just going to go really quickly over them so that you guys know what is available. And then I'll tell you and I'll go through um, some specs with you and show you which runes I recommend for which spec. Okay? Pets and so on. So let's go ahead and start with chest runes. Okay? There are, um, I believe, four uh four different chests that you can choose from or ch chest runes that you can choose from number the first one's cobra strikes uh your critical hits with shot abilities call your cause your pets next two special attacks to critically hit okay expose weakness your range criticals increase your attack power by 40 40 percent of your current agility for seven seconds lone wolf you deal 25 percent increased damage with all attacks while you do you do not have an active pet and the last one is Master Marksman, which increases your critical strike chance by 5% and reduces the mana cost of all your shot abilities by 25%. Okay? Um, gloves, you have, I believe, the same four to choose from. Beast Mastery, Carve, Chimera, Shot, and Explosive Shot. Okay? Beast Mastery, your pet's damage and health are increased by 30%. Focus regeneration by 80% as well. In addition, your pet's growl... Um, also taunts the target to attack it for three seconds okay carve a sweeping attack that strikes all enemies in front of you for 50 percent weapon damage chimera shot you deal 125 percent weapon damage refreshing the current sting on your target and triggering an effect serpent sting it instantly deals 40 percent of the damage done by your serpent sting viper sting will instantly restore mana equal to 60 percent of the total amount that would be drained by Viper Sting. Scorpion Sting attempts to disarm the target for 10 seconds. This effect cannot occur more than once per minute. Okay? Explosive Shot. You fire an explosive charge into the enemy target, uh, dealing 74 to 91 fire damage. A charge will blast the target every second for an additional two seconds. Cooldown is shared with Arcane Shot. Okay. Flanking Strike. You and your pet deal simultaneous instant 100% melee damage. Afterwards, your Mongoose Spike and Raptor Strike deal 10% increased damage for 10 seconds, stacking up to three times. Raptor Strike has a 20% chance reset to reset the cooldown on Flanking Strike. Kill Command, give the target, um, command the target, give the command, uh, kill, sorry, give the command to kill, <laughs> increasing your pet's damage done from special attacks by 60% for 30 seconds, okay? Each special attack done by your pet reduces the damage done by 20%. Um, damage bonus, rather, by 20%. Okay, Serpent Spread. Um, also a leg rune. 
target hit by your multi shots are also affected by your serpent sting for six seconds all right sniper training your shot abilities gains 30 percent increased critical strike chance while you move uh while you have not moved for the last six seconds okay so there's a lot of really 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 cool runes um a lot of runes in here like i look at them and i see from 1 to 25 they're not going to really be to the potential that they could be a little bit further in game one of those being exposed weakness i really feel exposed weakness later on probably um past level 40 ish definitely level 50 60 exposed weekend weakness in my opinion is probably going to be like the top rune that people are going to really really want to do with their chest it's really really it's going to be super powerful okay um so there is that one i don't know how good carve is carve is like a wild card um you know hunters don't naturally have the best accuracy with uh with melee weapons so i don't know how good something like this is it could be amazing it could be just some kind of okay you know um i also don't really know how much um mana it costs to use carver what the cooldown is or anything like that um explosive shot is great i really like explosive shot i'm a big fan of this flanking strike is just phenomenal flanking strike is just like literally the bee's knees bro flanking strike is awesome now i didn't mention things like lone wolf beast mastery there's certain things in here that are just like no-brainers kill command things that you know upon looking at them like this is gonna be amazing you know they they're, they're kind of runes that excite you to look at the possibilities okay of what you can do with them now uh what i want to talk about right now are three specs all right and there's kind of sort of sub specs within these three specs some of them first let's go over beast mastery all right because i think that these runes really really kind of lend themselves to all three of the specs you could do something really good with all three of these specs with these runes okay let's go to beast mastery first all right beast mastery is what i'm going to be doing okay i am going to be a night elf hunter beast mastery spec that's what i'm doing okay now this is a spec that i have chosen um you all may disagree with this spec if you do let me know in the comments below with what and why i'd really like to know but uh first off to move down right away i'm going to put two points into improved aspect of the hawk um i think a three percent chance is pretty high enough to increase my uh range attack speed by 30 percent for 12 seconds i think that's going to happen pretty often you know when you're range with a hunter you're attacking all the time especially when you're like in an open world pvp skirmish or in a battleground that aspect of the hawk improved aspect of the hawk it's gonna proc quite a bit obviously not as much if i put five points into it but you know you have choices to make all right now i did do in endurance training for three points now there is kind of a little bit of you know where you look at this and you're like why the extra 9% health? You know, is 9% health really going to be that big of a deal? I may move this three, these three points here and put them into improved aspect of the Hawk. I haven't decided yet. I mean, I that kind of seems logical to me to do something like that, but I'm just kind of thinking about it right now. All right. The pet is going to be extremely powerful in beast mastery spec with the runes that i'm choosing and i'll go over that in a minute so i it was really hard for me honestly to not put all five points into endurance training that is how powerful my pet's gonna be especially with my pet choice and i'll get into that a little bit later okay three points into thick hide to increase the armor rating of my pet by 30 percent all right again beast mastery spec you are really highlighting the pet the Beast Mastery spec for Season of Discovery is really all about your pet. Your pet needs to shine. Your pet needs to be as powerful as it can possibly be. It needs to be as defensive as it can possibly be. It needs to do damage like it needs to be able to just hit, you know? And so with that thick hide three points, I'm going to put two points into Improved right, right, Revive Pet so I can make sure to get my pet back up in case uh, my pet dies. Beastial swiftness is really important. Okay? 
right when I ding um, level, I'm guessing 14 or 15, I'm going to hit Bestial Swiftness. 14 or 15, whatever. I'm going to hit Bestial Swiftness. Excuse me. Um, I'm sorry. It's This is level 15, I think. I'm to level 20, I think. I don't know. Anyways, Bestial Swiftness um, increases the outdoor movement speed of your pet by 30%. The reason why is because when you get Aspen and Cheetah, if you do not use Bestial Swiftness, you will outrun your pet and your pet will just um, despawn. And then you'll have to spawn him again. And if you get into some kind of a fight in open world and you're trying to send your pet in using your hot button and send your pet in, it's like you don't have a pet. And you're like, oh my God, I forgot my pet despawned. Now I have to freaking summon my pet. I have to click my whistle. And it's just that extra second and a half to two seconds can be the difference there. So you really want to get Beast of Swiftness. You got to get that, in my opinion. Okay? Unleash Fury. Unleash Fury increases damage done buy your pet by 20%. That is huge. That is extremely huge. All right. Now, the reason why I picked these, these talents specifically, okay, was because of the fact of the armor bonus and the damage bonus specifically. All right. Obviously, Beast of Swiftness is great, but these two are my key in this whole entire, in this whole, your first points for level 25 cap, this is where your key, that this is where your you're really going to concentrate. These two are the most important. These two here are non-starters and non-negotiable. You have to get these two capped, in my opinion. Let's go over runes for um, Beast Mastery, okay? Beast Mastery, now you got chest, you got gloves, you got legs, okay? My chest rune that I have chosen is going to be Master Marksman, all right? Um, it increases your critical strike chance by 5% and reduces the mana cost of all of your shot abilities by 25%. The reason why I chose this, really, the crit is nice, but my shot ability, the, the mana savings of my shot, of my, well, really, I have, really, I believe I only have arcane shot, but still, I use it whenever, I can use it whenever it's off of cooldown, and I never have to worry about using it more than likely because of that 25% in, you know, reduction in the mana cost. That is really huge. So, and the 5% increase in crit is going to be really nice since I'm not going marksman. So master marksman is what I am going to, what, what I'm going to choose. Now I will say if I get some really good gear and I find myself critting like a lot, I might, I might swap my master marksman rune to Cobra strikes. Okay. If I'm critting a lot and, and losing that 5% crit does not, you know, tank my critical strikes, like, tremendously, obviously I'll be critting less, but it's going to be kind of like, you know, you have to see how much less you crit. If I'm critting insanely less, obviously I'll put it back on. But if it changes it just a little bit, but I'm still critting often enough, I'll probably put on the Cobra Strikes rune. Okay, and this one, your critical hits with shot abilities cause your pet's next two special attacks to critically hit. But again, it's really important to emphasize this is only with shot abilities. And I only have one shot at this level, I believe. Unless, of course, you know, I get explosive shot, which I'm not going to do in Beast Mastery. Okay? So, we're going to go ahead and say Master Marksman is what I'm going to do more than likely. Now, Beast Mastery is going to be my glove room. This is a non-negotiable, again, a non-starter. Beast Mastery, your pet's damage and health are increased by 30%, and its focus regeneration by 80% in addition. Your pet's Growl now also taunts the target to attack it for 3 seconds. Beast Mastery is like my bed, bread and butter um, rune. That is going to be basically where my whole entire build is going to be built off of Beast Mastery. Okay, so... Um, I have chosen my pet around Beast Mastery. I have chosen my build around Beast Mastery. Everything is built, you know, my other runes are set up based off of Beast Mastery for crying out loud. Okay, so this is, this is like the I Ching for my build. All right. Um, now, my glove rune is obviously is going to be Kill Command. 
Okay, I'm sure that comes as no surprise. Give the command to kill, increasing your pet's damage done from special attacks by 60% for 30 seconds. Each special attack done by the pet reduces damage bonus by 20%. Now, I did look into kill command, and I believe the cooldown on kill command is only one minute. Now, some things might be different on Season of Discovery. I don't know yet, but um, when... Um, kill command is in the game it is a one minute cooldown uh so being able to use kill command every 30 seconds is pretty fat okay that's going to be amazing you know using kill command in conjunction with beast mastery the bonus you get from beast mastery is just it's stupid it's stupid now none of this works unless you have an amazing pet to really, really just bring out that damage to serve you in PvE and especially in PvP. I don't know about you guys, but I'm going after these rewards, okay? I'm going after this mount. I'm going after everything that I can get, all right? So I'm gonna be doing a lot of PvPing. I'm gonna be hanging around in Ashenvale a lot. I'm gonna be doing Warsong Gulch a whole lot. So um, I need the perfect pet. And in my opinion, that perfect pet is uh, Washi Pawnee. Okay, Washi Pawnee is a serpent. It's a level 25 serpent in the Barrens. It's in the Southern Barrens. It's not a rare spawn. It's a named mob. I believe it has like a five to seven minute or so respawn, but it can spawn in three different areas. All right. All right. This is an area that at the time you go to tame this pet there's gonna be a lot of horde in that area so if your alliance is gonna be a little bit hard for you to get this pet um it's gonna be tough because if i can imagine if horde see you taming it they're just gonna snatch it from you and kill it so that you can't get the tame i mean if i was alliance that's what i would do all right just being honest um so it's gonna be kind of hard to get this pet but it's gonna be worth it Washi Pawnee comes stock with Lightning Breath 3. Lightning Breath 3 is a um, ranged and, you know, in me it's, it's melee range, but it can be cast from a distance, okay? It's um, an instant um, lightning ability that hits a target for, you know, 30 something to 40, like 36 to 40 damage, which is pretty much the hardest hitting ability at this level. It, it hits harder than Bite, and, well, obviously it hits harder than Claw, but Claw, the amount of, of uh, focus that Claw takes is much less. So, obviously, the damage has to be less to compensate, right? But the amount of focus that this takes, that Lightning Breath takes, is the same amount of focus that Bite takes, but it does more damage. Washi Pawnee is actually at 25. Washi Pawnee is actually uniquely powerful more powerful than I would probably venture to say every other pet in the game at that level period bar none full stop okay and I'm happy anyone in the game who wants to meet up with me and pet duel at 25 I'm happy to do it 100% happy to do it if you don't believe me okay um attack speed is uh 2.0 attack speed uh but like I said it's all about that lightning breath the lightning breath is key and it comes rank three. Now, like I said, he's in Southern Barrens, has, you know, a few different spots, really beautiful wind serpent. A lot of people don't like wind serpents because they make like a hissing sound um, every time you send them in and it can get a little bit frustrating sometimes, but I mean, you get used to it. It's a, it's a little bit annoying, but you get used to it. And I'm telling you guys with the runes that you're using with um beast mastery runes that increases the damage and health by 30 percent and the focus regeneration by 80 percent washi pawnee is going to be spamming that lightning breath over and over and over and over you put that pet in a pve and i'm sorry pvp environment and just put him on aggressive and let him loose People are going to be running around and they're going to be trying to run away. And no matter if they sprint or what, Washi Pawnee will be able to hit them. If they slow him, 
he will still be able to hit them. Okay? So, this pet um, is my choice for Beast Mastery. Okay? Um, I think I stayed on Beast Mastery long enough. Um, I don't really think... I mean, there's other things you can do. Could you choose Cat if you really, really want to? If you have a think about Cats? Um, sure. I personally was thinking about doing um, a Cat and stealthing in bushes with my night elf and prowling with my cat and you know aim shotting people when they ran by for fun however you don't get prowl until level 30 so unfortunately this is not something to do that you're gonna be able to do until we raise to level 40 cap so that being said uh cat is out washi pawnee is in okay now let's go ahead and go to the next build which is going to be uh marksman okay now marksman you can do a couple of things with marksman when it comes to runes but first off let me go ahead and tell you how i put my points it really depends whether you're going to be focused on, on pvp or pve okay um i set this up as a focus to pve i'm sorry pvp and I put five points improved concussive shot just to move down immediately. Okay, this is a 20% chance in concussive shot that it's gonna stun the target for three seconds. If you're chasing somebody, a group of you guys are chasing somebody trying to run away and you concuss that target and it stuns it for three seconds, your group is gonna catch up to that person and they are essentially dead. There's nothing they can do about it. That's it, they're out, right? Improved concussive shot to me is number one. Number two is going to be lethal shots. And um, this is essentially lethal shots and aim shot is essentially what your build is based off of. Okay. So it increases a critical strike chance with range weapons by 5%. And an aim shot that increases your range accuracy by 70, which is really good. So aim shot hits hard. It hits very consistently, consistently, and it seems to crit quite often. Okay, so there's aim shot. Now I put one point into mortal shots. Um, oh, I'm sorry, I put three points into Hawkeye. All right, three points into Hawkeye uh, to get that range, to get that extra distance. The extra distance is important. Um, it's important in PVE, but it's doubly important in PVP. So I really want that extra, extra yardage for PVP. Um, I needed one more point to move down uh, so I put one point into efficiency and then I went ahead and put one point into moral shots because I had one more point left and where else am I going to put it? You can put this point somewhere else if you want. If you want to put two points into efficiency, go ahead. If you want to scrap this one point and this one point here, put two points into arcane shot. You do you, boo-boo. You do whatever you want to do, okay? But this is my setup. Again, I will go ahead and put links to all the stuff that I'm working with here. Well, essentially my, my, my setups. Um, my talents rather and I'll put them in the uh, description below okay let's go with the runes okay now the runes for marksman um I am looking at cobra strikes here and cobra strikes does look enticing especially since you're getting that extra crit right here with lethal shots it does look enticing but I just don't think at that level even if you have to even if you have two um, st um, shots, right? You have arcane shot and you have aim shot, okay? Having both of those shots, that's, that's double chances to crit, okay? Um, so I still think that doing Master Marksman is going to be the number one choice or, or you could go Lone Wolf, okay? You could go Lone Wolf, and just go 25% increased damage straight up with all your attacks, okay? It really depends on what you wanna do. Um, there is a, um, if you are a night elf, for instance, and you have the ability to stealth, obviously without moving, that's their racial, you can go find a bush somewhere in a very busy area, in a very busy thoroughfare of a, you know, a contested area, and just stealth in that bush. Wait for somebody to walk by, hit that aim shot. While you're casting your aim shot, you're still going to stay in stealth until you loose that arrow. Once you loose that arrow, you're out of stealth. But that 1.5 seconds or whatever the cast time is on aim shot, you are, um, 
you are still in stealth. So you hit the enemy, and then at that point, if it's a rogue, uh, you want to make sure to put your um, your mark on it. You want to make sure to mark that rogue after the arcane shot, not before, so that you don't break that stealth. Okay, um, mark it, you know, and then just just go to town. Go to town. Just do everything. Chances are you're going to kill whoever you attack before they even know what happened. More than likely, that's, that's exactly what's going to happen before they know what happened because of the 25% bonus and your crazy, your crazy um, uh, crit that you have at level 25, having the extra 5% crit from lethal shots it, it is really high. Um, even if you don't go lone wolf, you know, that extra crit from Master Marksman, it's going to be great. So it's really up to you what you want to do. I say Master Marksman. I really like rolling with a pet. Okay, losing your pet at level 25, maybe that's a higher level thing, but at low level, don't lose your pet. Okay, it's just some people want to do weird things. And for that reason, I say that's an option. Okay, now explosive shot is going to be the glove rune that I would recommend. You fire an explosive charge into the enemy, dealing 47 to 91, 47 to 91 fire damage. A charge will blast a target every second for two seconds. Um, and the cooldown is shared with Arcane Shot. I would recommend Explosive Shot. This essentially gives you two usable shots because it shares a cooldown with Arcane, so you're no longer going to really be using Arcane. You're going to be using Explosive Shot, okay? At that point, I probably wouldn't even have Arcane Shot on my bar. I would just use Explosive Shot and Aim Shot. That's what I would be using. You stealth in a bush, you open up with an Arcane Shot, throw an Explosive Shot, you know, uh, Serpent Sting, a couple of autos, dead, 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 dead. Anything, nothing will survive. Okay. Uh, legs. Legs, I'm going to recommend sniper training. All right. Sniper training is what I recommend. Um, especially if you're doing that situation where you've been kind of chilling, stealthed as a night elf for six seconds and something wanders by. Oh man, forget about it. Like you're going to crit like crazy. You're going to crit your, like crazy. Your explosive shots are going to crit. Your aim shot's going to crit. Your auto's going to crit. Freaking everything's going to crit. They're going to die. That just seems like a lot of fun. But once you start moving around, you're talking about lots of, lots of enemies, lots of running here, running there. The sniper training does lose its luster, but it definitely has some coolness factor to it. But again, there is, you can change if you want and go serpent spread you know, anything you choose, really, like I said, the biggest, the best build I feel is going to be Beast Mastery, but I'm going to give you guys options just for those people who really don't like Beast Mastery, okay? Um, now let's talk about pets, okay? A pet for this build right here, I would choose a cat. I'm sorry. Yes, I would choose a cat. Sorry about that. Um, I would choose a cat. Now... Which cat are you going to use? Um, you really, in my opinion, if you want the absolute best cat in the game at this level, you have two choices. You have the Rake and you have the uh, Starving Mountain Lion. Starving Mountain Lion. The Rake and the Starving Mountain Lion. Those are the two um, cats in the game that have the fastest attack speed at level 25. You're not going to get another one that has um 1.2 all the other ones there's plenty that are 1.3 so if you want like a duratar tiger that looks like a bengal tiger they look really cool it's only 0.1 it's not going to really be that big of a difference but for those people that are really trying to min max at 25 which i think is one of the fun things about season discovery is trying to min max a 25 character so everybody can run around like twinks then you're going to really want the fastest pet period right that being said, the easiest one that you're going to be able to get is going to be the Starving Mountain Lion. It's going to be very easy to get for Horde, for Horde and Alliance. The Rake is coolness factor. It has a different look than the Starving Mountain Lion. So any hunter that's lucky enough to get the Rake, awesome. More than likely, it's going to be a Horde. Okay, roll with that. But I recommend Starving Mountain Lion. Um, you know, Teach It Claw. They're all over Hills, Bradfoot Hills, right over here everywhere it shouldn't be hard for anybody horde or alliance to get a freaking um a starving mountain lion they're everywhere 
okay, and they're fast. So that is going to be what I recommend. I do recommend taming a an, El, El, an elder Ashenvale bear at level uh, 25 in, well, obviously Ashenvale. Um, this bear, I believe it is claw rank five. I believe. Let me see. Um, yeah, claw rank five. It comes with claw rank five. Okay. So, um, that's what I recommend you that, that is like the pet. If you want to get claw rank five, you have to tame an Ashen Vale, an elder Ashen Vale, uh, Ashen Vale bear. Sorry guys. Um, and they're all over the, the you know, the eastern side of, of Ashenvale. Not going to be hard for you to get. All right. But if you're Alliance, there is going to be uh, increased horde activity in this area. So um, I would bring some friends. Okay. Um, the next one that we're going to talk about is going to be uh, survival. All right. Now, survival spec. Now, this is, this is kind of the most fun spec I'm going to talk about. And the reason why is because this is where there's some really new stuff and the possibilities for survival. You can go petless. You can go with pet. There's, I mean, obviously I always choose with pet, especially if you get double jumped, your pet is very beneficial. Um, but there's those people that might want to just say, screw it. I'm going to go straight up dual wielding, you know, go ham, no pet, no nothing. Just me and my two freaking swords, you know, dual wielding, cruel barb is a hunter. That can be fun. All right. Let's go through the build. I would put five points into deflection. All right. Uh, which is a very, very bread and butter, extremely important five points for you to put. Okay. It is the five points that you start with. Then you move on to two points into Savage Strikes, which increases a critical strike chance of Raptor Strike and, and uh, Mongoose Spike by 20%. This right here is what your whole entire build is built off of. Uh, well, it's built off of, you know, um, I can't remember what the heck it's called. Um, it's built off flanking strike, right? But in order to make flanking strike shine, truly shine, you really, really need the savage strikes for the crit chance on Raptor strike. And you'll see why when we go over flanking strike. Okay. So you put two th points here. You need three more points to move down. Okay. Um, I know there's improved wing clip. I just don't think that the, the, the proc chance on wing clip is high enough and if you're going melee anyways wing clip immobilizing the target doesn't really matter you're there to fight you're not there to run so that being said three points into humanoid slaying uh since the majority of what you're going to be fighting is humanoid now it increases your crit damage um and it increases your regular damage all damage plus three percent crit damage on top of that so that's awesome, okay, on all humanoids, all right? Um, uh, your next point off, obviously, deterrence. You want to grab deterrence. Super, 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 super important. Do not not get deterrence, okay? I also got clever traps. Increasing the duration of freezing and frost trap effects by 30% and the damage of immolation and explosive trap by 30%. I think clever traps, very important. Um... Whenever you're fighting anything, if you have, you know, if you're, you know, whether you're Beastmaster or whatever, if you're in the open world, especially on a PvP server, um, and you're going to be fighting something for a little bit, drop, drop a, you know, a freezing trap behind you. Drop a freezing trap, step, you know, two steps in front of the trap, and then go ahead and kill whatever you're going to kill. That way, in case some rogue comes and stealths behind you, you're going to find out, you know? Um, so definitely want that clever traps. And then after this, honestly, I threw three points into monster slaying, um, just to kind of round it out. You know, there's choice what you want to do with the three points. You, you know, you might decide that you want to go with the extra hit, you know, especially since you're going melee, you can, you can put one point into sure footed. So you might want to take one point away from there and put one point into sure footed, but you can only put one point. Okay. Um, but that increased hit by 1% if you're dual wielding is going to be helpful. So it's really up to you what you want to do. 
I think 1% hit is way better than one extra percent damage on beasts and dragonkin and whatever, and one extra crit damage bonus on dragonkin and beasts. I think this is much better use of that point. So I would actually put sure-footed. The extra hit chance is really nice. Um, so that is going to be the uh, where we're going to put our points for survival. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about the um, uh, runes, guys. This is for survival spec. The runes, we are talking right now about melee, clearly, right? That's who's really going to be going survival. Lone wolf. All right. Lone wolf, lone wolf, lone wolf. All right. You deal 25% increased damage with all attacks while you do not have an active pet. This is going to be super important because the whole point of this build is to be a melee hunter. Okay, you are a melee hunter, so you need to absolutely shred whatever's in front of you. Okay, so this um, rune is going to assist in that. Okay, um, the other rune that you can get for gloves, or not the other rune that you can get, but the next rune I would recommend is going to be either explosive shot or carve. Carve, I have a hard time recommending carve because i don't know 50 percent weapon damage cleave doesn't sound that enticing to me now it might be very low mana it might be spammable so something like this might be really really cool in actual practical application but that's going to be something we're gonna have to wait to see explosive shot is nice because you can fire off an explosive shot and then get in close while your explosive shot is ticking and doing damage and you can just be like whack 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 right so um i would say explosive shot until carve is tested out to see how good it is uh it's definitely an option now this this leg rune right here flanking strike is basically this along with um savage strikes is what the whole entire build is about these two abilities or the rune and that talent now Flanking strike is a leg room. You and your pet deal simultaneous instant 100% melee damage. Afterwards, your mongoose bite and raptor strike deal 10% increased damage um, for 10 seconds, sacking up to three times. Now, raptor strike has a 20% chance to reset the cooldown on flanking strike. The point of this is to have uh, flanking strike basically... Um, always ready to be able to use. So you're always getting the 10 second benefit of flanking strike. That's the point of this. That is why dual wielding is going to be nice because remember, you're getting the 20% increased crit chance from Raptor Strike and, and, and Mongoose Bite. So um, any crits from Raptor Strike the way it works is you want a flanking strike and then raptor, 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 raptor. That's that's what you want to be doing because you want to try and get that next flanking strike proc. You get the flanking strike proc, raptor, 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 raptor. Get it? Okay. So for this build, I would recommend dual wielding. Cruel barb is nice. Um, or I would recommend a faster two hand. Somewhere 2.8 to 3.2 um maybe 2.6 to 3 somewhere along there i think 2.8 is like the perfect speed it's not too fast and it's not too slow 2.8 to 3 to 3 is really where you want to be in my opinion because you want to be able to get enough raptor strikes in there in 10 seconds um in order to uh make sure you can get that crit you know, because you're going to get, you're only getting a 20% uh, crit bonus, right? You're only getting a 20% a crit chance. Now, of course, you could ditch a lone wolf. You could ditch a lone wolf, guys. This is the other, I told you before that there's a caveat to some of these builds. This is the caveat. Changing your chest rune. If you change your chest rune from the 25% increased damage from lone wolf and you take master marksman, not only does it add another 5% to your crit chance, making it a lot more likely 
that your Raptor Strike is going to crit within the 10 second time limit, but it's also adding a pet to benefit from your flanking strike procs, which is going to be huge, and not to mention all the damage that your pet does. So this whole build was based off of being, originally based off of being like that melee hunter, but I did want to throw in without a pet, right? Solo, lone wolf. But I do want to throw in that doing it with a pet is actually going to be obviously more efficient. But for those people that do want to be like their own man or their own woman, this is the way I would do it. Okay? Um, if you do choose a pet, um, my recommendation is the same as it was Marksman. Get yourself a Starving Mountain Lion um, and go to town. That's my recommendation to you. Um, so that is essentially your uh, talents. The three talent trees, Beast Mastery, Marksman, and Survival. That's how I would use those runes. Um, if you guys disagree, let me know. Um, but let me show you guys really, really quickly. I set this up. All right. I just, you know, this is just a generic, this is just a generic, uh, hunter that I created. Um, and I went ahead and set this up. All right. These are to what we know right now. And I didn't include any of the, you know, the rings or anything like that, that, you know, drop in Black Fathom these because I didn't see them available to choose. So I chose what is more than likely going to be pretty easily attained. All right. This, what I have set up right now is pretty, not easily attainable, but definitely attainable with, if you're willing to put a little bit of work in, you don't even have to have put in a ton of work to get these things. Okay, you really don't. All right, let's start with the headpiece. Alliance, if you want a decent head, unfortunately, the only choices you're going to have is going to be to get this rare. The chances of this rare spawning is... is I mean, you're essentially going to have to camp it and hope that it drops the, the, the helmet. Or um, you're going to hope that they put helms into Black Fathom Deeps, which hopefully they do have helmets in the loot table. Otherwise, if you're Horde, it's going to be really easy for you. All you got to do is farm the freaking, uh, the Rifleman in Dungaroke. Unfortunately, you can't do that as Alliance because they're friendly to us. So this gives Horde a huge, huge benefit. Okay? Eight stamina and seven agility at level 25 is fat. Okay, fat. So this, obviously, I'm going to put that there. Um, Alliance can't get this helmet, but Horde can. All right. The next one's going to be the Sentinel's Medallion, neck piece, um, six agility and two stamina. This is Silverwing Sentinels. I believe it's honored. Um, should be able to get this without too much trouble. Um, it's just going to take you some time. Dark leather shoulders, there will be people that are, there will be leather workers um, making stuff, you know, get out there, get involved with the, get involved with the guild, with the community, join a group that's helpful, feed them cloth and make sure to remind them of all the cloth you fed them when they get this recipe. Okay. Uh, Cape of the Brotherhood. This is, this and Tunic, well, Tunic of the Westfall is different, right? Cape of the Brotherhood, this right here is just a matter of running dead mines enough. Okay? Make sure you go in there with not, with less, you know, with maybe hopefully the same exact group over and over with, over and over again, so you get a better chance at getting it. But um, this is a great cape. Okay? There's other options you can use that are, you know, still good, but not as good as Cape of the Brotherhood. Okay. Tunic of Westfall is Biss. Um, that's going to be fantastic. Horde, they can they can go with Black and Defias armor. Now, Black and Defias armor is not bad. For PvP, it's arguable. It might actually be better, especially if you're going melee. If you're going the survival melee hunter, I would honestly recommend Black and Defias armor over Tunic of Westfall. So 
it's just because your horde don't think that you're getting hurt here. Um, Black and Defias armor is a really, really solid chess piece. And it freaking looks cool. Okay. Hello. There you go. And it freaking looks cool. All right. So either or. Now, Mad Wolf Bracers. Uh, Mad Wolf Bracers. Ooh, how do you get these? Uh, okay, that's right. Uh, Nightbane Valfangs. Nightbane Valfangs, I believe, are like 28 to 31 ish. So they're going to be orange or red to you at 25. Okay. So you're not going to want to go there alone, but they drop often enough that it's very, very farmable. The Mad Wolf Bracers are very farmable, okay? Just make a deal with somebody, tell them they can get the cloth, you just want the Bracers. Just come along, you know, help me kill them for a while, let me get the Bracers, you can have any other greens that you drop. Make some friends, guys. Tunnel Pick. Tunnel Pick is dropped by the, um, uh, in Wetlands from the, from the, uh, what are they called? Uh, the Dark Irons, the Dark Iron Tunnelers. It's a 4% drop rate. 4% doesn't seem like it's that high, but um, it is definitely high enough to make it very easily farmable. Tunnel Pick, they are elite guys. They're mid to high 20 elites. So you want to go with the group for this. You want to go with the group for this. So um, ask for some help, okay? Um, tough and leather gloves, gloves are, uh, crafted. Okay. So these are very, very gettable. Def Defy scale, deviate scale belt, belt rather. Also crafted. Very, very easy to get. Trip runners dungarees. Now, um, I don't know if they're going to lock Nomrigan or not to level 25 players. They might. They might not let you in Nomergan, guys. Even though you can get into Nomergan technically at 25, and you can do that quest, that's literally the only quest that you can do in Alliance that rewards... Actually, that's not true. The Lancer Boots we're getting next, also from Nomergan. Talk about that. If if Nomergan is locked, these two things here are no-goes, no okay? But if Nomergan's not locked, you need to find a way to beat the last boss of Nomergan that's a level 34 elite. That's a skull boss at level 25. Damn, is that run going to be a good time? And we're going to be running it if it's available. I promise you, we will be running that on stream. Um, so Trip Runners Dungarees, again, this benefits the Alliance enormously because the Horde cannot get this. And none of the gear that drops... None of the gear that drops in 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 Nomergen is um, even usable. All that gear, the the minimum level of all the blues in Nomergen are above level twenty five. I think the lowest level blue in Nomergen that drops off a boss is level twenty six or seven. Now there are definitely the world drops that drop off trash. There's trash mob blues. And uh, those are lower level. Okay. Now, Lancer boots are off of the quest that's in Nomergan, uh, where you have to escort the guy. It's called Mortality Wanes. You have to escort the um, uh, the the goblin out of the dungeon. It's really easy to do. Even at level twenty five, you should have no problem doing it um lancer boots boom six agility five stamina great boots guys great boots seal of rin you just got to run stockades it's gonna be a little bit tough at 25 but it's extremely doable all right so this ring is definitely 100 percent. you're gonna get it alliance again this is alliance this is alliance this is not pros uh protectors band this is also silverwing sentinels honored i believe uh again same thing like this one you're gonna need to put in some work insignia of the alliance very very easy to get kill 10 to 20 um uh people of the opposing faction something like that wait for the tally to come in and then get your insignia from the vendor uh grab this okay now of course you could get lucky and get the green you know the arena grandmaster's trinket i'm sure there's going to be some people that are going to go at level at level one and try and snatch up, you know, try and get that ring as fast as possible. Now, 
this is a source of argument, I'm sure, for some people. People are going to have something to say about this. I believe, even though it's all the way down here, I believe that Venom Strike is bar none the best in-slot bow you're going to get till about level 40. I love Venom Strike. I am such a huge fan of Venom Strike. The extra damage, the extra nature damage that it does procs so often that it's just awesome to use. It's not super, super slow, and it's definitely not fast. It's a good speed, so you're not going to burn ammo like crazy, all right? It's just a phenomenal weapon, and it's very easy to get. All you have to do is run Wailing Caverns until it drops. Make sure you only make sure you're the only hunter that is um, in the group, and freaking do it. Okay, put yourself an accurate sc accurate scope on that, and you'll be set. Okay, you should be able to get an accurate scope. It's just about finding an engineer that has a high enough level to make it. Keep in mind, guys, um, you can get your uh, professions 225 unless they change it to 225 at level 25 okay but that does require you to go into level 40 zones okay and get materials like ore mithril things like that you might need um uh you might need a true silver rod i don't know exactly what for for enchanting things like that i don't know what you need for enchanting to do you know two two five enchants see what i'm saying but uh you know it's not going to be easy but it sure as hell is going to be fun um uh, but anyways guys that's what i got for my hunter um for my hunter guide you know i, I hope you guys like it i hope this helps you um i know that was a lot definitely longer than i that 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 than i thought it was gonna be but um let me know in the comments down below what you guys thought about it i hope you guys are excited for season of discovery i know i am again i will be playing a night elf hunter um on day one i'm looking forward to playing with all of you uh or playing against uh many of you and uh, please come check me out when i go live on twitch i go live almost every single day guys it's at uh, twitch.tv slash hero uh the link is in the description below and i'm also going to be playing the project epoch beta starting this friday so if you're interested in checking out what that private server is all about make sure to stay tuned to some content or watch my stream on twitch take care guys i'll see you next time